Welcome to the Brook, bearing clusters of truth with a splash of common sense. Good evening and welcome to the Brook on Canaan Radio. I am Will and I'm in the studio today with David. What a Peter. Hello. Myself and JT up in the booth as well. Pastor Reeves is not with us right now. Pastor and Mrs. Reeves. He has gone to a better place. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. If you join in the chat, <laughs> it means something different. Uh, anyway. So we're going to go ahead and get started. We're glad that you're with us today. You can request a song during the show by texting us at 920-940-8275, or you can request a song in the chat. If you join us on YouTube, you can send us a direct message on Instagram and Twitter using our handle at Canaan underscore radio at any time. Mm-hmm. During the, Someone's got their audio on. Pete? Who is it? Somebody. Is mine on? No, mine's not on. You know when you can, like, hear it in the background? Uh, it was okay. JT. Sure, Must have we'll, been. we'll blame it on Maybe you. it was mine. I don't know. I thought mine was all the I way down. I turned mine down, but I don't know if it actually mute was on. Anyway, with that, it is time for... For... Let's get ready to ramble. I do this every week. Someone had to every do it, week. okay? There was Someone has just to a hair of a, Someone a has It was talk. longer than normal. It was. It I had was. to fill the empty silence. Can't have that on the radio. Mm. Anyway, all right, let's ramble. It was a f- g- gloomy day today. Oh, it was, it was a beautiful kinda... day today. Man. No sun, just... Oh, it was great, wasn't it? Clouds. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and, and, and rain. It didn't Perfect. really rain today, though. No, actually, it didn't. This morning, it did, before bus meeting. Like, I woke up and Like, early raining. in the morning yeah. at 4 o'clock. Oh. Don't ask me why I was up at 4. Well, I remember rolling over and hearing the rain hit the window, and I was like... Uh. <laughs> really? Were yeah. you? Was that is that how it went? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh. I didn't I didn't hear any rain. Good for I, you. I tend not to hear anything when I had night. Uh heavy sleeper. Um but I got to mow my lawn today. Wow. Yeah. That's so. the first. That's a blessing. Cause mowed my lawn. But I'm just saying, like the weather was kind of I mowed bleh. my lawn on Thursday. Mowed. Well, Will had more faith than I'm I did. I'm realizing that if I cut the front lawn. It's, it's actually better if I cut it just a little bit shorter. The back lawn, though, I need to leave it a little bit longer. So I, like, rotate between a four and a five on my on my mower. Mm. So in the front, I mow it a four. In the back, I mow it a five. Mm. Just noticing that it just it looks better. Okay. So. Anyway. I was noticing I mowed the church lawn, this one up here with mm-hmm. the riding mower, because it was so high, I didn't want to try And I bag it. I didn't want to try to use my push mower. So I just bagged it with the with the riding mower. But um, I think one of the blades is slightly bent on that mower, which would explain some of the noise. But it also, <laughs> I was looking at it. I'm looking at it, and it's got, like, some parts of the grass where it's, like, cut. Cut a little you shorter? Can, yeah, you can see it's kind of cut cattywamp. Uh-huh. I'm like, should hmm. probably get that fixed. That's how they make crop circles. Oh, it's, here's the thing. Here's a weird thing. That tree's dead. Which one? How do you know it's dead? Um, because I grabbed one of the branches, and it went... The, one of the little tiny branches? That little teeny... W- which tree? So it... The one that's right outside this door here. That little teeny tree. The hmm. the oh. red, red... What is it called? Red, red maple It had or leaves something. last yeah. year. Yeah. No, it had leaves this year. It it leafed out early. And then uh, we got like snow or got cold. And it never can't... It like... Lost the leaves? Yeah. Well, the leaves are still on it. But I mean, it's just like... But it's all... There's no... Hmm. Hmm. So... That's interesting to me. I'm going to see if it, maybe it'll come back to life. You never know. Not if I can help it. No. <laughs> <laughs> but it, because it, it didn't. Maybe it, it had too much salt over the winter. Uh, I love sprinkles. On your donuts. Killed it with Actually, mine. I don't. I don't like sprinkles. No, that's not true. She said 63 you, degrees you, and a few sprinkles you, in South You Dakota. like sprinkles. There is a donut at Casey's that you like. It is a chocolate donut. Yes, but it's not with, because of the sprinkles. With, it's got like a frosting yeah. and yeah. sprinkles. What kind of frosting? Um, it's a white frosting. It's like a... Oh, just it's a, a white frosting. Yeah, it's a white frosting. White. But I like it because it's like a... The donut is like crunchy on the outside. It's cake the sprinkles. Don- it's a cake donut? Yes. Uh Oh, it's so good. It's the sprinkles. Mm. Is it I did not kill it, Dad. Better the warm or? Eh. The leaves leaved, as Brother Jeff says. The leaves leaved. Ugh. 
Make like a tree and leaf. Yes. Uh, yeah. Uh, oh, the bad puns. Hey, can you? No, never mind. I could. Don't. Forget what, it. You want one? Moving on. No, we don't want any bad <laughs> puns on the air. David is the king of bad puns on our radio station anyway. No, what are you, I'm not what are you gonna say? No. You can't both do that. You can't be like about to say something. Well, if like, you do nah, it too, then we can it. move on. <laughs> you can request a song by texting us at nine two zero nine four zero eight two seven five. I have a feeling that today's broadcast is gonna be a little bit shorter than normal, but that's okay. That shorter is just fine. You can watch previous episodes on YouTube or listen to them in your car, in your AirPods and headphones, on speaker, on... It doesn't matter. You can listen to them anywhere. Yeah. And for those of you who have cassette tape players, sure. you're, you're sunk. Yep. yep Too late. Trouble. Unless, Unless you get the bad. cassette tape player adapter and then plug into... That's true. That's true. Then you're not, actually, I, those I are that for handier my than... Yeah. Well, no, I, no. I actually bought one that's Bluetooth, so it's... Whoa. You just plug it. It's a Bluetooth huh. tape. Very so. Nice. Yeah, I, can, I got one. That wait, is, which of your cars has it's a, a tape deck? Kaylee's car. Okay, okay. It's a tape, and it's got the auxiliary cord, uh -huh. and it connects to a Bluetooth, which connects to a Wi-Fi router, which connects to my phone, which and there's a connection from my phone to a cassette player so that I can play tape play a tape. So you're going to play a tape through everything into your cassette player? That makes no sense. Why don't you just... <laughs> never mind. 920-940-8275. That is the phone number you can send us your song requests. Brother Peter is standing by begging you to send him a song request because... Did, did you get the yeah, song request at the I got beginning? them. I yes. got the both at the top. There yeah. are a couple of song requests that we also... You can request a song in the chat on YouTube and make sure that you like and subscribe to us so you get notified whenever we... Go on here and, and talk nonsense. With that, we're going to play our first requested song, Happy Am I, uh, requested by Jewel by the Vandenbergs. We'll be right back. Welcome to Hot Off the Wine Press, where we deliver nothing but the freshest of fresh, fresh news and first up today happy birthday ray lynn happy birthday ray lynn happy is, birthday ray lynn is one of our uh, youth in our, our rising old truth bus kids oh very old rising old. truth youth mm -hmm. bus kid and she is turning how old is she today 37 uh 14 <laughs> Fourteen. She's a year old. No, she's a year. She's, not. So she's happy, a year older than she birthday. was last year. I'm guessing fourteen or fifteen. Happy birthday, Ray Lynn. Fourteen. Pretty sure it's fourteen. So yeah. Poor Lindsay. Oh, rats. What? Fifteen. Fifteen. So cool. wait. No. I thought your birthday was today. Why? Did you, why are you saying I'll be? I am. I oh. Is. Explain yourself. Wait. Is it like you know eleven o'clock at night and yeah. you're not she's counting it those, until then? One of those people. Yeah. Should we sing happy birthday to her? No. Okay. David. Yes. What else we got? Um, well, we've got Memorial Day on Monday. Yes. So we're going to be celebrating that. Make sure to thank a soldier. Think about those who have given their lives. Take some mm -hmm. time out of your day. Thank the Lord for the country that we have. Mm -hmm. Even though most of the time we spend complaining about it, we should still be grateful for it because it's still the best. It's good. still is. Yep. And it took a lot of sacrifice to make it that way. It did. Who's who's preaching tomorrow morning? Are you preaching? Tomorrow? Yes. Are you preaching a memorial themed message? Yes. He was going to preach about. I had something else in mind, but yeah. I say I had something else in mind. I had something else prepared until I remembered that mm. it's memorial. It's a Memorial Day weekend, so. So now he's preaching we'll switch about things hot dogs. up. We'll switch things up, and then mm. uh, I'll use. What I had written, what was funny was Sunday, or not Sunday night, Wednesday night, dad had asked, if you remember he had asked you to preach. Yeah. He had asked you to preach. And then everyone was giving each other a hard time. And I was like, fine, I'll do it. And so I go back, I go home. Prepare a message. I prepare a, I prepare a message. And then dad, he usually texts us like the verses, the verses and the mm -hmm. title of whatever in the message. And uh, all of a sudden I'm sitting there, I'm literally putting the last points on my message and dad sends us the verses and everything and i'm just like uh okay i thought i was preaching he's like nope i got it i was like okay which wednesday night was, was okay because that was message. a good that was yeah a good it was a really good mm -hmm. message yeah. so that but was. yeah 
Oh, Raylan says she's technically allowed to drive now. She's at the age where she's yeah. I don't know where drive, she's so. thinking that. I'm pretty sure you have to be 15 and a half to get your learners, don't you? No, 15. Right He's, at 15. Well, Why is Nebraska so weird? Yeah, as far as I know, but in order I don't to know do what it, state to... what state would be considered normal that sets the the age at a half. Fifteen and a half. Who, who, the, what kind I, of a normal just state does I remember. Half? Oh, by the, the way, you reason, have to be and a the half. The only reason it could be it could be further than fifteen. I don't think it's an age thing necessarily. Is you have to have you have to log so many hours or something. But do 15, they still do that? 15, do they still do okay, that? Okay, you can actually it can actually be younger if you live if you live over I think it's seven miles away from your school. You can actually you can actually get your license younger too. Hmm. So, but I don't remember since when I got my license. Yeah. My first license, I don't know. Right. Well, interesting. But technically, Raylan, still you cannot drive because you are not legally able to. Well, she uh, she could she is legally not at the legally. age of she could <laughs> Oh yeah, that's she true. Could Lindsay can with drive. An adult. Too. She could drive with an, an adult. If she has her, her learner's permit. Learner's yeah. permit. Yeah. So she could, technically. Well, it doesn't you can do you can, you can do, do whatever it. you want. It's just not legal. <laughs> and Maybe Lynn, I don't know. I doubt Raylan actually it, could drive, period. <laughs> She's too short. You never know. I, let's not find out. Yeah. Any, what else do we have to add? Anything else? Uh, we're talking about skills. Memorial Day, and then coming up after that is uh, June. Actually, we have oh. all the stuff coming up in June. Vacation Bible. Uh, we've got Vacation Bible Camp coming up here pretty, mm-hmm. pretty soon, and our theme is? Boot Camp. Boot Camp, yep. Boot Camp. Wear your boots. Yep. Get ready. String them up. To we're having T-shirts for all the kids this year, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Different color for the workers. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to have some awesome games. No, we're we're getting rid of all of the games, all of the food, and all we're going to do is make them exercise and run the entire time get until the they the throw up. Setting up <laughs> yes. obstacle courses with barbed wire <laughs> yep. and mud pits. We're going to shoot live, live fire shooting. Live <laughs> <over their head. laughs> yeah. Paintball. Paintball. It's okay. Sure. <laughs> sure. No, we won't do that. Mm. And anyway, we will so probably do something with paintball guns since probably. it is boot camp. Yeah, Why we'll, not? we'll do some we'll do some fun stuff. It'll That'll be, be awesome. In other news, I'm going to bring this up because we we just talked about this while we were we went and grabbed something to drink right before the broadcast. So Ford this last week just released their very first electric all electric truck offering. It is the basically the F-150 format, but as an all electric vehicle and it's got a lot of features that other electric vehicles do not have which Mm. makes it really interesting especially that um that a major car manufacturer Mm -hmm. is bringing a truck to the table which if you know anything about tesla tesla did their they did their cyber truck which really it Mm. looks like something that only millionaires are going to drive around it doesn't really look it's kind of eccentric i think is the word yeah okay whatever whatever you want to call it i just don't think that there's going to be a lot of people driving cyber trucks to a work site so it's not very practical then you have the company Rivian, who is going to be releasing their versions of a truck and an SUV, all electric. They'll be releasing those, supposed to be later this year. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But Ford, Ford is ahead of the game. They've already started shipping. They had a lot of pre-reservations, so I think it's later this year when they're actually going to be shipping full, like like anyone can buy one. But they think yeah. they've got 80,000 reservations right now. And how, wow. how much is one For, of those? Base model is 39,000. That's not bad for an electric vehicle. It's so it does it what does are these features? That's really not bad for a pickup. Period. Yeah, I was going to go over the features, but it's 230 miles is the is range. the rated range for the base base model. But here's here's the caveat on that. It's actually rated for the 230 miles or whatever with a thousand pound load. Nice. So okay. you get rid of that, that if you're just driving it around. Up. A very reasonable ministry expense, personally. I mean, sure. For who the assistant or, Is, bus, okay, or the so bus director? <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of really cool features. Um, of course, you know it, it doesn't need the you know the front engine compartment anymore. So they put a front trunk in it, and in the trunk there is a there are four wall type outlets. USB and USB C ports in the front, which is okay. really cool. It also has drainage in the front in case you want to fill the bottom part with ice and put drinks and stuff in there. You can, it's not tailgating because that would okay. be in the back. So it'd be what front gating or something? <laughs> <laughs> it's surround gating. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, but it's really cool. You can, you can do put that in there. It's got hmm. real nice lights and stuff in the front. But anyway, it's got the four wall outlets in the front. It also has four outlets in the bed nice. of the pickup truck as well. Um, along with a much bigger size for if you're pulling, um, I'm trying to remember the form, the the voltage, 
but it's a higher. The two, the two, yeah, yeah two twenty instead of one ten. So yeah, really. What would you run? I don't, I don't know, but it's there. Bring your you air conditioner. Yeah, Still exactly. not as plug cool it as my pickup. Okay, though. but hang on. There's some. There's a, a couple of other really cool features. One, it'll be the first vehicle that has actually a reverse. Uh, not reverse charging, but basically, so let's say you have a, you have a Tesla or your, let's say your wife has a Tesla and she runs out of power on the side of the road. You I don't can think pull that would over. happen to me. You, you, yeah. you can, you can go and you can charge someone else's vehicle from yours. It's the first one to do that. Nice. So you can actually charge another electric vehicle from yours. Another really cool feature is, and it, this only comes with the, the higher tier models, but they actually include, um, hardware for you to be able to add a hookup to your house so that if the power goes out at your house, your vehicle hmm. can power your home. Backup generator. And they say they say that the average home, based on how much the average home uses, it could power a home for about three or four days. Hmm. So that's really cool. I mean, I don't know what place is going to be out of power for three or four days, but that's, but that's, I mean, that's pretty neat that's not that, bad. that you can do that. So hmm. just a couple of really cool features. And, so this is my yeah. question. I've always wondered this. Could you put a gas generator in the back of your truck What's and the or point? car What's and the point? plug it into your Tesla Peter. and then drive forever. <laughs> what I'm is the asking. point? <laughs> I'm asking. Well, you would run out of fuel. You can't drive forever. Well, but the amount of fuel expended to charge it yeah. I don't would think be less that, than I don't the only think way that you they would do that. have that they would have a generator that would put out enough if well, that's my generator question, was hooked up to solar panels. Yes. Why not just hook <laughs> solar panels up to the truck? It's oh. a solar car. We don't want a solar <laughs> we don't car. Want we that. want uh we want no, fossil fuel. My my question is because you most of the times you have a uh the charge port put in your garage, right? right. It right. just runs yeah, off just a regular one twenty. You just plug it in at night right. and in the morning you wake up and it's it's charged. Charged, right. Yeah. So if you're driving around town, it's no big deal. They, and of course, you know, the the actual charging networks are so big now that you they're, pretty much they're a lot I mean, better than they yeah, have been. You can no, like my only question, my uh, my only asking of that is just because, of, you know, how how funny would it be to see somebody Someone with an electric with truck? A, yeah. We got a generator in the back with his charging. You just have to be different. To. You got to be that one person who's different than everyone else. I would, I could see Peter driving around with a couple of generators in his in the back <laughs> of his it, truck until it breaks down. <laughs> when would I get an electric truck? And the nice thing about the electric is, you know, you're not changing oil, you're not checking fluids, yes. you're not. None of that. So, I mean, and here's the other thing on the elect. So I think it's 750 horsepower technically. I mean, but we're, we're, oh. we're talking from the second that you, you touch the gas pedal that I say it's gas pedal. It's not really gas pedal. Accelerator. It's electric power. Accelerator. The accelerator. Yeah. When you hit, hit the accelerator, you, the, at the instant you hit it, you have all 750 horses. It's not like a regular vehicle where you've got, You've got the torque curve where at about 5,000 RPM, let's just, for example, 5,000 RPMs where you have the most torque and you got to find the right gear, you mm -hmm. know, to keep you there. What are the glasses? Why, why do I need to wear these? Nerding out. I thought it was geeking out. Anyway, these are really weak. These aren't even really that. They're not even glass. I, know, I, so, yeah, I am nerding out. But, but what I'm saying is, what I'm saying is, as a truck, I mean... Hey. Towing. How long? You, you here's my question. Instant power. How long before before zero to sixty? The majority four seconds, four seconds. majority of people that buy cars are buying electric vehicles. How long? When are I'd say twenty five years. Twenty five years. I, years, no, years. I think the price years. point has to come down just a little bit more for it to be that accessible. But as soon thing, as the price point becomes equal to an, a gas. I think it depends. The base on, I think it depends really on how many. It really the base model is especially much for there. a truck. But I don't know very many I, people who are going to be going into the thing going. Oh, I'm getting the base model. I think it. I think it. In large well, part what's the most expensive model then? It's about ninety thousand. <laughs> okay. Almost a hundred thousand for for well, I mean, the top tier. Yeah. So that just needs to be cut in half, and basically you're right there with the yeah, top when tier. Yeah. When the when the base model starts at Ford twenty thousand, twenty thousand, and the top model is maybe fifty. Mm -hmm. Then I think it's going to be like everyone. Oh, it'll buying. just be everybody's getting electric. Right. So um, it is interesting that we. The still only rate. downside, obviously, is if you use your truck going a l like long distances every day, like in Nebraska, you probably normally would. Mm -hmm. If it's a work truck, but if it's just around the farm, around town, park it, plug it in, get back in it, and you're gone. But yeah. oh, I was looking at for some reason. For some zero reason. turn, electric mowers. It was like, wow. Like riding? Yeah, like riding, riding lawnmower. A zero-turn mower. Three and a I half just, acre rating really? after it charges for like an hour and a half. Hmm. Who makes and it? And it was uh, Ryobi. 
There's actually another one by DeWalt, but it's a little bit less powerful. Do you remember when the the push mowers were first coming out, yes, the electric ones? Electric. And I just, w- I, I couldn't, well, first of all, they were like, you plugged them in, like mm-hmm. you had the extension mm-hmm. cord. Then you had the battery ones and they were like, this will run for, I think it was like 45 minutes or something like that. And I was like, I just don't feel like that's long enough to mow your lawn. And then what happens as the battery dies? Does it just, you know, it gets it weaker and weaker it, and weaker. it can't, it can't yeah. cut grass anymore. I just, oh, yeah. but... Battery technology, I guess, is the point now where I would have to try one before I would be like, yeah, I'm, I'm good with going to an electric. Well, know, the base model. model for this thing was like 4,500 bucks. <laughs> 40, it was 45. a 46 inch. I think it was a 46 inch. 4,500 for really? But that's not bad because, I mean, if you're buying an actual zero How big is the deck you said? I think it's 46 inches. I think that's one is. They had a smaller one too. 46 is really big. It's not bad. Inch? No, yeah. I mean, that's. That's an average size. I have size. a 48. 30, a large 30, And then the big one is 50, 54. Okay. They have 60-inch yeah. commercial style, yeah. this dial. Not that one, not in that company or the electric one. But, I, I mean, remember. I mean, what kind of... The only maintenance that you'd have to be doing, you would obviously... Replace the battery. They yeah. said it may be every five to ten years, depending on what it is. Brother, so. Brother Jeff said, isn't zero turn impossible? Chirp, chirp. <laughs> I think it's more interesting. Uh, we, we were all reading. Still rate power with horses. I think that's still interesting. I remember learning about the reasoning for the reasoning behind that. Oh dear. Of what? But I can't. I can't horse explain power? it because I don't remember. I don't remember the specifics. The science behind horse how power? we rate horsepower. Oh, it's because it's not just a horse pulling something. No, no. It was the force required to lift. I think it's a thousand pounds in the air at a rate of one foot per second. Right. <laughs> No, I'm, yeah, I'm who knows? Sure. It is, it is. But I'm saying, who knows? It is. That? Because I couldn't, you I couldn't read couldn't random things. The, I couldn't remember the. I I saw so, someone did like an example on it, and in, in what what all goes yeah. into all that jazz. So it's basically a pulley attached mm-hmm. with a rope over it, with a weight being lifted straight up by a horse walking forward. Is what the horsepower thing is, and it's a thousand pounds being lifted by the horse walking forward. Something like that. It, what about that's the size because, of the horse? Because they were trying the to average rate horse. The average horse. <laughs> There's a thousand. So you have horses four or five horses do it, and then you average out. How can 750 How? horses <laughs> go under that hood? Yeah, exactly. of the new F-150. Yeah. Anyway, so rambling sounds interesting. Yeah. yeah. All right. I think we've killed this. I, we section. probably we've we've killed that was a good news. No, we beat a dead horse. We beat, <laughs> we beat the horse. You can request a song at 920-940-8275, or you can send us a direct message on Twitter and Instagram using our handle at Canaan underscore radio. And if you are on any of those social media platforms, go give us a follow. Let us know that you support us. You can also support us on YouTube by following us, Mm -hmm. liking the videos, and then clicking the little notification bell so you can get notified any time that we start to go live again, or if we just release a new video. Let's go ahead and play the next requested song about the cross. Her father's for the song was requested by Ariana. We'll be right back. George Bocamp Vic, or GB Vic, was born 1901 and died in 1975. He was never ordained, though he pastored one of the largest churches in the United States. He preached Sunday morning sermons to his congregation only about 10 times out of the year. His early ministry success came before he was 25 years old, when he built a church youth ministry of more than 1,000 teenagers. Once, he was responsible for 100 teenagers joining the church on a single Sunday. He never attended college, but he founded one. He was not a musician, but he led the music for two of the most prominent American evangelists of the 21st century. Now, G.B. Vick was born January 5th in 1901 in Russellville, Kentucky, where when he was <clears throat> very young, his father traded a career as a lawyer politician for the pulpit at the age of 37. Eben Vick, his father, led his sixth child to the Lord and baptized him in 1910. He would often take young George on pastoral visits, but the preacher died suddenly in his prime, suffering a massive heart attack while preaching a sermon in his pulpit at Judson Memorial Baptist Church in Nashville, Tennessee in 1912. The family then moved to Louisville, Kentucky and entered a a protracted period of privation. As the world went to war, Vic was attracted to a military career and joined a preparatory program at Louisville Male High School, where he became the ranking cadet. He set his sights on West Point, 
But by the time of his early graduation, the Great War had come to an end, World War I, and Vic sought other ways to make his mark on the world. He landed a job in the auditor's office at the Louisville and Nashville Railroad, where he met and married Eloise Baker on May 6th of 1919. She was 20 and he was 18. The next year, Vic wrote uh, to a number of railroad companies based in Fort Worth, Texas, about potential employment. Cowtown was in the midst of an oil boom and the pay was better, and the Fort Worth and Denver Railroad hired him, and he and Eloise moved to Texas. They were drawn to Fort Worth's famous First Baptist Church, pastored by J. Frank Norris. Now, Norris saw qualities in young G.B. Vick he knew would serve him and his church well. He pursued the young railroad executive and invited him to join the church's paid staff. Vick resisted until 1924, and then at the age of 23, he took the first steps in the ministry journey that would span more than half a century. Vick would spend the better part of the next 25 years working with Norris. G.B. Vick certainly studied dramatics under J. Frank Norris, but he learned other things from him as well, like organization, motivation, church building, communication, persuasion, and promotion. And after years on Norris's staff, Vic was recruited by a nationally known evangelist, Wade House, to work as an advanced man and music director. In 1934, Norris accepted a call to the pastor at Temple Baptist Church in Detroit, Michigan, located at 14th and Marquis Streets. He did so with the understanding that he would remain as pastor of his Texas church and commute the 1,300 miles back and forth. He began to look for someone who would do a, uh, be the general superintendent running a day -to -day, the day-to-day -day operations in Detroit. In the, <clears throat> Sorry. in the providence of God, Norris invited Mordecai Ham to Detroit. The evangelist dispatched G.B. Vick, now his advance man, to work out the details. When the man Norris... Uh, would soon brand as the world's greatest layman, walked into his office. He knew his, ser his search was over, and he applied all of his celebrated powers of persuasion on his former associate. Vic agreed uh, to, be the, uh, to be the associate pastor. Temple Baptist Church was gearing up for a championship run. As Vic organized and Norris energized the congregation, the church began to, to experience dramatic growth. The Texas preacher came to Detroit twice a month for several years. He knew how to get the attention of local media and draw uh, curious crowds. But the ultimate reason for Temple's numerical success was the cultivation of a dedicated cadre of volunteer workers. This was Vic's forte. Vic also learned from Norris the value of house-to-house -house visitation, which was highly effective at the time when people sat on their front porches and kids played ball in the streets and few felt the need to ever lock their front door. It worked very well in the 30s. Detroit, average attendance at the Temple uh, Temple Baptist grew from 761 in 1935 to over 2,000 in 1937. Ten years later, the average was just under 3,000 uh, in attendance. The trend would continue through the next decade, moving toward the 5,000 mark. As numeric success in Detroit began to rival, then surpass what was happening in the Fort Worth, Texas church, Norris grew envious of Vic's success and the clear affection of the people for him. One area of concern and conf conflict was his seminary. It had always been poorly organized operation at the mercy of Norris's whims, but by 1948, it was threatened with financial collapse. Vic eventually yielded and became president of the seminary. His management skills brought the Fort Worth School back to financial stability in less than two years. Norris uh, wanted to uh, to regain control of the seminary, and this did not sit well with many at Temple Baptist Church, which voted to install G.B. Vick as the sole pastor. That fall, Baptist Bible College opened for business in Springfield, Missouri, with over 100 students, and G.B. Vick was its founding president. Vick did not preach most Sundays at Temple Baptist Church, at the most only 10 or so times a year during the main 11 o'clock morning service. The remaining 40-plus Sundays would feature speakers from across, America, from across America and around the world. His successor at Temple Baptist, Dr. A.V. Henderson, described Vick as the essence of grace. Uh, Gary Gray remembers... <clears throat> Uh, flying into Detroit's metro airport from Pe Pe Pueblo, Colorado, for his first speaking opportunity at Temple. Dr. Vic met me at the airport and started to pick up my suitcase. And I told him I, I got my own suitcase, Dr. Vic. He told me that he would carry it to his car. And I said, I can carry my own ca ca suitcase, Dr. Vic. And he said, Gary, are you my guest? I answered, yes, sir, I am. He said, then I will carry your suitcase. And I said, yes, sir. Similar stories were frequently uh, cited. And it, at an age when most preachers were thinking of retirement or are, or are already retired, Vic conceived a bold new plan to lead his church through yet another massive relocation and building program. 
In August of 1966, he personally conducted negotiations with the city of Detroit for the sale of the Grand River property and facility uh, to the Board of Education for uh, one one million one hundred and fifty thousand. It was a 16 acre track of land in nearby Redford Township was purchased in a beautiful state of the art facility fe- featuring over 4,500 seats and was designed and built for four and a half million. Today, about 32 million. Uh, well, in today's dollars. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the church moved in April of 1968, and under Vic's wise financial uh, leadership, they were debt-free in less than six years. In May of 1969, uh, G.B. Vic and his wife celebrated 50 years of marriage. 74-year-old Vic sat in his desk at the office of Baptist Bible College in Springfield on Monday, September 29th of 1975, with plenty to rejoice about. Just three, three weeks earlier, he had marked his 40th anniversary with the Temple Baptist Church. More than 300 men had been called to preach out of his church during his tenure. And the day before, on just an ordinary Sunday, no special emphasis, they had a, an attendance of over 4,000. There, no, there was a report on his desk about the current enrollment at the college. It was over uh, 2,300 students. Uh, he died in his office. Now, uh, Gladys May Alloward. Gladys May Alloward was born February of 1902 and died in January of 1970. She was a British-born Christian missionary to China. Alloward was born uh, one of three children to Thomas John Alloward and Rosina Florence in North London. From her early years, Gladys worked as a housemaid following a calling to go overseas as a Christian missionary. She was accepted by the China Inland Mission to study a preliminary three-month course for aspiring missionaries. Due to her lack of progress in learning the Chinese language, she was not offered further training. Now, in October of 1932, having worked for um, Sir Francis Young Husband, Alloward spent her life savings on a train passage to Yangshan, Shanxi Province, China. The perilous trip took her across Siberia with the Trans-Siberian Railway. She was detained by the Russians, but managed to evade them with local help and a lift from a Japanese ship. She traveled across Japan with the help of British consul and took another ship to China. On her arrival to Yangshen, China, Alward worked with an older missionary, Jinan uh, Lawson. Alward became a national uh, became a national of the Republic of China in 1936 and was a revered figure among the people, taking in orphans and adopting several herself, intervening in a volatile prison riot and advocating prison reform, risking her life many times to help those in need. 1938, the region, region was invaded by Japanese forces, and Alloward led more than 100 orphans to safety over the mountains. She did not return to Britain until ni- uh, 1949, at which point her life in China was thought to be in great danger by the communists. The army was uh, actively seeking out missionaries uh, to kill them. Now, settling in Bangstoke, she gave many lectures of her work, and after her mother died, Alloward sought to return to China. After rejection by the communist government and a stay in in British-administered Hong Kong, uh, she finally settled in Taiwan in 1958. And there she founded the Gladys Alloward Orphanage, where she worked until her death in 1970. Now, there was a film made of her life, uh, based on her life, is The Inn of the Sixth Happiness, as its name was released in 1958, it drew a, much from the book The Small, Small Woman by Alden Burgess. Although she found herself a figure of international interest due to this popularity of the film, the television and media, in, in, and because of the television and media inter, interviews, Allard was mortified by her depiction in the film and the liberties that it took on her life. Now, Allard died on January 3rd, uh, 1970, just short of her 68th birthday, and is buried in a small cemetery the campus of Christ College in Taiwan. Hmm. Okay. Short synopsis. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Both lives full of a lot of a lot of accomplishments. I feel like um, one being a missionary, the other one building a great work. Mm-hmm. But I think I see similarity in both of them. Just that desire, just to keep on, keeping on. Yeah. Because you think of. Um, you made the statement that G.B. Vic was, you know, at the age where most people would be retiring. He was like, yeah. "Hey guys, let's go build, a, <laughs> let's go build, <laughs> build the biggest building let's we've ever built." Let's go build something, and uh, just, yeah. just that. Did, you just don't see a lot of, a lot of that. Um, not so much anymore. Yeah, so. that's pretty crazy. I didn't know a little, a lot of the history of G.B. Vic, but that's interesting. Mm-hmm. That how uh, his life sort of. Went from being 
really not secular based, but I mean, working a secular job to being full time in the ministry on staff Mm -hmm. to eventually becoming pastor Mm -hmm. um, through roundabout ways. But just obviously a determined person with a work ethic. I thought it was interesting. I'm not sure who um, was who wrote put that article totally together as far as the visitation. It referenced door to door visitation, mm-hmm. but I'm sure it's door to door soul winning, um, which still works today. But it's yeah, interesting. Right. It's interesting how that is often connected with growth, um, because obviously. Your goal shouldn't just to be going out visiting to build your church, but if you mm-hmm. go out with the, a goal to win souls, um, the Lord will build the church off of that. So I think that's interesting. But was that you said he was brought? Uh, how many teenagers before he's twenty five years old? He had a, 20, a, a, a thousand, a thousand teenagers. How many teenagers? A hundred teenagers over the uh, mountain. No, 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 no. no, youth, no, no. It was a hundred teenagers one Sunday. Oh, joined. yeah. We're talking about but that. it was a youth department of yeah of, the. Uh, he was responsible for a thousand teenagers thousand. in his youth department. Yeah, wow, and a hundred of them joining that? on one Sunday. That's just growing crazy. It. Yeah, David, what's wrong with you? I got one more year. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> uh, that's great. Oh man, that's crazy. Can you imagine yeah. that? But I mean, of course, obviously that was in a different age, different time, different right. city, but, different city. Yeah. Mainly still. the city part. <laughs> you got to have uh, mm-hmm. you draw from a crowd of people, but uh, that's where God put him, and that's where God used him to to grow that work. And to, and I'm sure, impress upon many of those uh, teenagers' lives to live for God. Mm-hmm. We preached at him, obviously. Yeah. And of course, being under the ministry of J. Frank Norris, I'm sure his he he, he seems could like pre- he, he was sort of like J, it was sort of like he was sort of like J. Frank Norris, just a lot more organized mm-hmm. and um, yeah, sort and, of methodical, I guess you could say. J. Frank Norris is sort of just like a. Go. Well, no, okay. Jay Frank we'll, Norris, we'll fix it later. Just go. <laughs> J. Frank Norris was though uh, was a preacher though who knew how to pull people in who could right, do right. things for right. him and he could influence them. So that was where his great strength was. But he also obviously had, I mean, because it's G. B. Vick learned much of his organizational skills from him. He took the the best that he could from people. And the wonderful, the funny. Thing about him, honestly, is that he never went to college. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he, right. he never got a Bible degree. He never got a secular Bible degree. But it was because of his his. Uh, I mean, you don't need college if you can train yourself mm-hmm. and you can read your Bible and study and all that stuff. But you know why we have college? Because most people don't have that character. Right. He had a he had so. a uh, quite the secular history as far as jobs go with railroad um, with the railroad work that mm-hmm. he had done previously. So seeing see him, seeing him take a lot of that. And it even said that, that Norris, when he first came to his church, that he saw him, he's like, he's like, this guy, yeah. this guy, it said he tried, it tried to influence him to come on the payroll mm-hmm. of the church. You mm-hmm. know, he wasn't exactly a huge fan of that. But, but yeah. The work ethic, though, regardless of both of these individuals, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. is one of the things that always sets them apart. Of course, I think it is a walk with God that's most important. But if you have a walk with God, you're gonna have that work ethic. Mm-hmm. But I feel like that's the one thing that's missing these days is the, you know, there's so many distractions. There's so many other things that we can be doing rather than, you know, working hard. So I think having that part instilled in your character and keeping that at the forefront without without demanding that you're, you know. There's a balance there. I don't think you should be killing yourself wanting to have a thousand people in, in your youth department when your church is in North Platte, Nebraska. Mm-hmm. Probably not. Well, I think realistic. Do we even have a thousand teenagers in North Platte? Absolutely. Yeah, probably a thousand. Uh, yeah, it'd be, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But you're 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 getting pretty much yeah. the entire pool of teenagers there. Pretty much. Yeah. But the point is, you leave the results up to the Lord, and you just work yes. hard. But. Um, I just feel like with uh, social media, with uh, the entertainment, TV, friends, there's just even even in, I'm not even just talking about the world side of things, I'm just talking about in our everyday lives, mm-hmm. as just as Christians, I feel like there are so many things that can easily take the place of, in the past, what was um, more profitable things that they did. Mm-hmm. Even if you think about it, even entertainment back then, um, tended before TV, what did they usually do for entertainment? A lot of times, it, books were a lot more popular. Right. So mm-hmm. the entertainment was more educating. Just like the fun things they did was more. It educated you. Nowadays, 
It does nothing but right. fry your brain cells. Mm -hmm. And so I just feel like <clears throat> the character level of people back then was a lot higher. And I don't think it's necessarily just about what day we live in mm -hmm. as it is individual, individual choices. But I think that's important when you look at the stories of all of these men or the, you know, um, the, the history of all of these men and you look at what's the same with all of them. You know, of course, I think one of the things that we've drawn out is the fact that they all are bold for Christ, willing, willing to put all on the line to serve the Lord. But I think the other part is the work ethic side of things, mm -hmm. being, being able to focus on the Lord and just work hard. That's all I got to say. Yeah, I think there's a lot of distractions um, for young people. One of the big ones I think I've seen in a lot of places has been, has been the sports, has been sports, mm -hmm. you know. Not saying that you can't stay physically fit or active or enjoy doing something like that, but just the the absolute black hole that sports turns into where it's like there have been some people life. where it's like when you meet that you 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 talk to them, they can't help but bring up you know they how I'm live, involved in sports eat, breathe, or like yeah. you know volleyball's my thing or basketball or like mm -hmm. our team or you know it's just like whereas this guy whereas g b Vic I would I would doubt that he talked about very very much less than what he was involved what he was involved mm -hmm. in you know what I'm saying so yeah I was thinking about this earlier this week not necessarily sports but just the fact that I feel like I, I feel like if we took young people of yesteryears of, of these men and women that we've talked about mm -hmm. as teenagers and had them meet not even just as teenagers just as young people and had them come and meet the Christian kids that have that are you know, the same age nowadays, mm -hmm. I feel like they would just be totally shocked, which I think explains in large part the condition that our families and America mm -hmm. and our churches are in. It's just, there's, it's not just, it's not just, uh, you know, lax or, right. or not having the character, but the carnality, yeah. just the, the not caring, not having an awareness of wanting to serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. Just living every day, doing pointless, carnal, vain things that don't even matter. You know, I just, just I was scrolling through social, the guys, social media, yeah, yeah. just going through social media and looking at. I'm talking about our Christian young people, and I'm not saying you can't you can't enjoy carnal things from time to time. I'm not saying you can't have friends. You can't. You fun, dud. You, yeah, I'm not saying you can't have fun. <laughs> But it's just, it's a totally different mindset. Right. When all, so, many, so many young people are just living their life just for what? I don't know. It's like, what separates you other than the fact that you go to church every service and you, and you say that you have standards and you dress a certain way and you're supposed to listen to certain type of music. And you, but like the outlook, the point of living, right. like what are you, what is your goal? Like why are you, they feel like they're just floating around mm -hmm. doing whatever they want to do. And it's like, no wonder America's going to hell in a handbasket. Mm -hmm. Young people don't, no one cares. Mm -hmm. No one no one has the work ethic or the desire or the walk with God to even care. They're just like, yeah, you know, what, am I, what can I possibly do about it? I'm just going to do my thing. One of the worst things that any young person, and I'm talking, when I say young person, I'm talking about from the age of old enough to read to graduating college, young person. Mm -hmm. One of the worst things they can do is be on social media. Yeah. Literally one of the worst things because it shapes your mind of what you, what 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 you think it shapes the mind of mm -hmm. what you think the reality is supposed to be. Right. Mm -hmm. Because all you see are these couple of seconds of someone else's life that they chose to show. Mm -hmm. And you think, well because my life's not exactly the same all the time, there must be something wrong with me. So what do we see? We see people's philosophies changing. We see p p uh, people's values changing. And when right. I say philosophy changing, we're just like, what are you talking about? I see more young preacher's kid posting those motivational one-line memes and gifts and like, you know, believe in yourself because no one else will. That garbage, then I do see, what about the Bible verses that talk about that? Mm -hmm. Like, we like to motivate ourselves with, you know, the latest TEDx talk about how to, you know, Humanistic be successful. Thinking. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but where is where is what God says on that on that topic? But if right. you're t if you're constantly washing yourself with the ideals that you find in social media, what do you think your life's going to be about? And I've heard some people say, "Well, I run my business. I use I use it to run my business." Okay, how about a business that doesn't require you to use social media? How about something that requires you to go talk to people? Right. Do you know why we have a dearth of young people who can communicate? A dearth of young people who are willing to go out and knock on doors and aren't ashamed to 
to knock on a door and they're not nervous. They, they, I, very few young people I have gone soul winning with outside of our church. I've, and, and I've gone soul winning with quite a few that don't struggle when they are at a door talking with someone, just being personable. Because why? That human interaction is gone. Mm-hmm. Yep. It is, it is this digital world that we live in. And as much as, People could attack and say, well, you know, it's a different age we live in. I agree. We live in a different age, so I'm not saying bury your head in the sand. But if you think about someone like G.B. Vick, someone who you could say almost, you know, would pioneer what you would think of today as door-to-door, soul winning, door door knocking. Mm-hmm. Where Where is the young people that are... They're too busy out there taking Instagram selfies. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. And... and f- busy with photography or busy with their business on Saturdays mm-hmm. or busy with, with, and, and here's the other thing. I am, I am very discouraged at the outlook that we see, uh, from young people on what, what they either have been trained or believe or led to believe about how to find God's will. Mm-hmm. Finding God's will for young people is such a joke anymore. Yeah. It is, it, it's, it's one, it, it just, they act like it's some magical thing that's just going to slap them. Mm-hmm. Two, well, really, that's it. They just act like it's this magical thing that's going to slap them. Like, it's going to take them away. Like, it's going to totally turn their life. That's what God's will Transform is. Transform It's something them. that just totally turns where God's will comes by you step living by step. in His will. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, what is His will? Are you attending church every service? Mm-hmm. N- okay, let's start there. Okay, well, are you reading God's word daily? Are you soul winning? Are, are you, you are you spending time in prayer? Yeah. Are you? Yeah. It's too simple though. Like, it's too, uh, like no, those are the no, basics. No, no, that takes too much work. <laughs> like those are the basics. Really, that's what you, it gets back you, to. You, you start you start with that, and guess what? God's going to do the desires I, of your heart will change. You will yeah. make the right decisions. You will begin to find out that oh, God wants me to do this because the Holy Spirit is speaking to you. It's not. It's like we're getting the cart before the horse in so many different places mm-hmm. that you know young people feel like the Holy Spirit. It's this magical wind that blows on you, and you feel it during this mm-hmm. this beautiful song that you heard at church with yeah. people wave, waving I, their hands. I, yeah, and I know that we have harped on this before, but I can't. It's still and it always it still shocks me, and will always shock me, and I will never understand it, and I hope I never do. And I think it plays hand in hand with the social media thing and with the social life that so many. And it's not just young people. It's, it's all ages. Right. It's all ages. But when you're talking about how you, one of the worst things that young people can be on is social media at certain a, at those ages, mm-hmm. um, it's like I grew up at youth, going to youth conferences and hearing preaching, even here at church. What are the usually listed? The two biggest um, pitfalls that teenagers have to struggle with throughout their entire teenage life. Friends and music, usually we're always the top, friends and music. Mm-hmm. And that big one, friends, because when you get connected to friends who don't believe like you, right? Mm-hmm. they pull you down. They pull you in that direction, not the other way around. And what shocks me is I don't understand how a young person who, who has grown up in a Christian home, who has been taught, and I'm not saying I believe in it, I agree with every single avenue or every single standard that they have, but for the most part. They're independent fundamental Baptists. They've been taught the right kind of music, been right. taught the right kind of dress standards, been taught who they should hang around, been taught the Bible they should mm-hmm. be using. The friends, like the close best friends that they are having that, that don't dress like them, don't listen to the same kind of music, like don't believe yeah. one iota like them, and they are becoming like best besties with them. How does that happen? How do you become besties with someone that you have nothing in common with unless... You don't. You really, have something in common, unless you don't really believe right, what you've been exactly. taught. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I see that all in the ranks, all across fundamentalism, yeah. where yeah. young people are reaching out, and a lot right. of times it goes into the music industry, and and so much to the point where they have no problem. It's like they don't see the separation of oh, I shouldn't tweet or post this because it's got you know country music in mm-hmm. country music, in. and they don't even think about it. They're like, hey, uh, they promote it, right? Yeah. And it's so sad because it goes back. It comes back to the fact it's not social media's fault. No, it's the fa- it's the fault of the young person not making decisions as they get. And I am putting the blame on the shoulders of the young person, but we obviously there is the responsibility to parents, parents teaching their yeah, kids, yeah. and pastors teaching their kids, and right. something is missing. Something it has dramatically the ball has been dropped, and and the outlook that teenagers have, mm-hmm. the viewpoint viewpoint or perspective that young people have that adults have today is just so far from from a um an attitude of the ship is going down it's just mm-hmm. like yeah yeah the ship's going down let's let's take a selfie of it 
Yeah. You know, that's where we're yeah, at in America. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And again, I'm not saying you can't have a social life, mm-hmm. but you can tell by looking at people's Instagram or their Twitter or their Facebook what they're all about. And you do see, it's just like anything else. If you, okay, so if you grow up eating only Pop Tarts mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. chicken nuggets, the first time that you ever try broccoli, you're going to be like, what? You know what I'm saying? Right. And what we've got is a generation that they're being fed garbage. They're eating garbage. Mm-hmm. And then when the real thing happens, so Pastor Reeves not here, but he makes a great point. He said something. He said, preaching will always be what makes the difference. Real preaching. Mm-hmm. And that is so true. Right. And uh, you'll, you'll have people who, who want to downplay the importance of preaching. Not teaching, not hand-holding, not discipleship. Mm-hmm. Preaching. Right. Foolishness of preaching. And, Here's the thing. There's no appetite for it because young mm-hmm. people, when they get under it, if it's not close to what they're currently feeding themselves on a regular basis, it's not palatable. So you know what right. it turns into? It turns into, oh, your, here comes the word, disposition. Mm-hmm. I'm so sick of seeing that word because here's the thing. 99.9% of the problem is not the disposition of how the right. message is delivered. Mm-hmm. It's the fact that you don't like truth, right? Mm-hmm. And that truth, truth for you isn't palatable because you're you're not living a life that is digging into God's word and, and being taught those truths, or you didn't have an upbringing that was and, constantly filled with truth. And I'm not saying you can't be gracious because right. bringing it back to G. B. Vic talked about he was a very gracious mm-hmm. person, you know, seemed to be a preacher of grace. It's not that you can't be gracious, but you understand is when it comes to delivery of truth. Just because it doesn't fit your vendetta or your what or or your your specific palette of what you desire, doesn't mean right. that there's a wrong. I'm I'm just I'm so tired. And I saw a preachers, a preachers kids tweet on social media about disposition, and that kind of garbage just really frustrates me because it doesn't even need talked about. It doesn't. Mm-hmm. I don't know one preacher whose disposition is wrong in the pulpit that is preaching truth. Right. Because guess what happens when you preach truth. When you, when you the focus, truth, the emphasis is put on the wrong side. Exactly. It needs to be put on the listener, right. not the preacher. Exactly. And the point is it's a vicious cycle, and it just goes down beca- downward because people can't don't have an appetite for preaching anymore. And so the preacher can't st- refuses, will not stand up and preach like he needs to preach because if he does, then he won't have the big crowds. Mm-hmm. And, he won't, and, it, and it just continues to feed on the carnality and on the, on the snowflake Christians. And so when someone yep. does stand up and say it... You get shocked, like yeah. You get, well, what's going on? It's like it's what but you ultimately what you're used to getting. Ultimately, the point is, it all comes back to it all comes back to you know five to thrive. It comes back to Bible. Absolutely. You know the thing that'll fix all of this is really realistic. It is or it's peanut butter on the bottom shelf. If you're not praying, you're not reading your Bible. You're not going to church. If you're not tithing and if you're not going soul winning, mm-hmm. right. then and if we if we were to all the young people that we're talking about or anyone that it doesn't have the right perspective, they're missing some of these things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the young people that I see on so- social media, it, you know, the bus min- if they are a part of the bus ministry, if they are, it's, it's mere a Sunday, Saturday. It's, it's mm-hmm. a mechanical thing. Right. Um, and it's not a ministry, a life. It's not a life mm-hmm. thing. It's just, I just do this because that's how I grew up, and they don't really care about the people they're visiting. And it's just, it's sad because... Uh, you know, I think there are a lot of a lot of good young people out there that are serving the Lord, that are mm-hmm. that are doing good for the Lord. But we need we need more of them. You know, mm-hmm. we need more GB Vicks. We need more people. Yeah. And it's not we don't know them because they have a thousand people in their church. That's not what makes you a GB Vic. It's the character and the work ethic right. and and the giving your life to the Lord. Let the results be God's choice. Yes, but get some I, th- I think I think also value is in. And I'll say this, and we'll move on, unless someone else has something to add. I really think value for young people is such a big deal. Where's the value? So, for instance, I would say there are a lot of young, well, maybe not a lot, but there are quite a few young men, young women, whatever, on social media who their value there is their appearance, what people think of them. I can think of folks who their social media is about themselves, images of themselves, or uh, you know, it's about keeping yourself fit. Mm-hmm. Here's the thing, it's hard. It's hard to keep yourself fit. You have to deny yourself. Mm-hmm. You have to do things like have a calorie deficit. You have to work out. You have to do things that are hard. But mm-hmm. where's you have, there's a value. There's a value. And what is important to you? 
that's that's where that's where things come down to. Mm-hmm. And the Bible talks about that. Where your treasure is, there your heart is. If your treasure is not in God, if your treasure mm-hmm. is not in church, if your treasure is not in His Word, in His will, and and you can't buy this garbage that well. I'm just waiting for His will. Mm-hmm. You're either in it or you're not. His is, will is his will is day 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 by day. Right. Not not oh the Lord called me to be this amazing preacher of a church of five thousand. That's not how God God's will mm-hmm. works. So and, and if you have you should not the church should be your life and it should not be the other way. It should not be church as a part of your life. That's that's where you have yes. the treasure. If you're right. constantly p- church working, isn't a seasoning you yes. add into your and life. Here's the, if you have to be paid on staff to work at the church, then you're missing it. Right. Mm-hmm. And I know, I know I'm know, i blessed. I know we, we at the table are blessed right. because we get to constantly put that treasure in uh, at the church and working in that investment, and we're, and we're on staff. We're paid to do that. But if we lose the other side of it, whereas if, if we got a secular job and we never showed up at the church throughout the week to invest, right. or we never got on our bus to decorate, to do extra things, or right. we didn't clean a bathroom, and not just on Saturday, but you know, extra stuff where mm-hmm. we are going out of our way to make sure that we are putting our treasure in the right area, right. that's, I think, how you have the right value. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's, yep. young people have... And it. you're right, and, and it's not being taught. As a matter of fact, it's being taught the total opposite, where church is this thing you sprinkle in, mm-hmm. and that, you know, it needs to be just... When you can, I've literally heard preachers say... Heard some preachers say, you know, if you can't, then okay, but you got to do the mo- best. No, it's not, a, it's not if you can. Mm-hmm. It's that needs to be our life. Of course, you know, growing up in a preacher's home, our life revolved around church. But even when dad was, a, you know, assistant pastor or, or worked, 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 I can remember, we, church was still mm-hmm. everything. Yep. It was still, yeah. you, you eat, breathe, drink, sleep, church. Right. You know, your, your heart and is you in And you sprinkled that place. in. And you sprinkled in the, the but here's, but here's the and thing. little stupid stuff. Here's the you know? thing, and and I uh, I got to preach at a youth conference. And that's the one. That's one of the points I made was, when you put God first, here's what He does. He adds all the rest of that to you without you even having to search for it. Mm-hmm. You don't yep. even have to ask for it. It just it's there. It appears. Whereas all these people who they it's like their constant desire is for all those little things. That church side eventually disappears, and their life falls apart, and they can't figure out why. It's because you didn't have your heart in the right place. Right. So anyway, I just think, I really think that when you look at both of those people, because if you look at Glad, uh, Gladys Alward, if you look at her and her influence that she had in the, in, in, and I can remember reading books on her when I was younger, the prison system there, where she was such an influential part because she, she herself would go into those uncomfortable situations. That's another thing. And I don't want to keep talking forever, <laughs> but, but being comfortable being comfortable is such a, yeah. such a, a ploy. It is, it is, well, it, it is like, it is what sucks young people in, this being comfortable thing. It's what keeps, keeps kids living with their parents. It's what keeps kids uh, from going to Bible college. Mm-hmm. It's what keeps kids from making church. Being comfortable is, yeah. is this drug that if you're not comfortable, then life must not, something must not be right. Right. You're whereas, not in God's will if you're right, not comfortable. Right, right. Where, whereas it is the opposite. It is. It is the opposite. And you think of someone like Gladys Alward, she was out of her comfort zone. Going into things like prisons, being a part of keeping prison prison riots from happening because mm-hmm. of her willingness to be a witness and a testimony. And then, you know, when when kept being kept from her goal in Siberia or, or being stopped by Russia, she wouldn't let that stop her. Mm-hmm. It's like there's... Like, she could have said, oh, what well, must not be God's will, I'll probably should go home. We just, you don't have right. that. We do, you, don't, you don't have young people, or I say young people, Christians in general. It's not just young right. people. I see it a lot in young people because I feel like that's... That's where our, where that's, our viewpoint that's is. That's where our right. age, mm-hmm. age is right now, but it's, but it's a lot more than that, so. Yeah. Okay. I'm done. Anything <laughs> else to add? <laughs> no. I, just, I think you're right. I think okay. it's all about the, where you're putting your treasure. Nine two zero nine four zero eight two seven five. You can request a song. We're going to go ahead and play the next requested song, and then we'll come back and do the pulp, pulp mm-hmm. section segment uh, moments of time. Next song is "To Count for Jesus" by the Epleys. We'll be right back. <music> 
Some people hate it, others love it. Either way, you can count on us talking about it. Welcome to the pulp. Mm. David, I, have I ever you done this one? Sweet tea? Yes. Like Are you five sure? Times. Have, have I? Probably because I last know I year. rant on it, but I don't think I've ever put it in the pulp section. That you like it Segment. or hate it? Well, some people like it. Some people hate it. I love it. We talking sweet? Sweet? No. Okay. So it depends on there are who you're talking to. Yeah. <laughs> there's iced tea. <laughs> and there's it's sweet a, tea. Uh, uh, controversy kind of, brewing in the industry right, right. now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> brewing. <laughs> Get it? Uh, <laughs> that's great. No. Uh, okay. So like my opinion, McDonald's sweet tea is too sweet. Like just full, like just like getting, like I'll get three quarters of their sweet tea mm-hmm. in my cup, and then I'll fill the rest in uh, with the unsweet. And I think that's that's good. But at the same time, I get I'm sweet. Yeah, they have both. Uh-huh. And then at like Dunkin', it, their sweet tea comes with four pumps of the liquid sugar. I add three more pumps because I, I don't think it's sweet enough. <laughs> you figure that out. I don't know, <laughs> but uh, I like sweet tea. That's that's a random pulp, but it just came to my mind. Um, I don't know. Casey's or not Casey's. Raising Cane's. There we go. No, they they've got, got good sweet they've tea. got good sweet tea. Perfect, perfect ratio. Uh, perfect. I, I I dilute mine with the. I oh, do what no. you do at McDonald's. No, it's perfect. Sorry. And it's the, oh, they're little ice cubes. The little ch- Ooh, oh now man. that ice that is good so ice. Good. Yes, it is because you that oh it cools it down so much faster. Mm-hmm. What were you gonna say? Yeah, I was gonna do mine, but go no, ahead. you do yours. I have no idea. He doesn't have. Okay, one. if you don't, don't have one, that's I'll fine. think of it in like two minutes. Okay, so today we were gonna go to Duncan. But the lobby was closed. They, oh, have, yeah. they have a shortage of workers. Here's the thing. And this is kind of what I'm getting at. Pretty much every place, every, not just fast food, right? We're talking like every business in town has a shortage. They've got it posted on almost every window that they're hiring. looking for help, that they're hiring. So here's the thing. It's like people just don't want to work. And I'm really struggling with that. I'm also struggling with the, I'm also struggling with the <laughs> rhetoric that's being put out by the left about gas prices. Yeah, and it's I literally it's so many because we're in a recovery. It. It's because we're in a recovery right now. The the prices are so high. Uh, are you are did like, you guys okay, miss you guys the closing down of a pipeline up in? What are you smoking? No, that doesn't even matter. That, that, that's that part does of it. Not, no, that's it's where not. it started. This it is year. not right. That's where it started. It's not. But, but it's gotten worse. It is because not. they fixed the pipeline thing and gas prices are still expensive. They have to come up with an excuse. To tell everyone this is not because of, home, of liberal ideology and because of Biden's principles. At the uh, end of four years, they'll say it was Trump's fault. Dunk. They will say dunk, that. Dunk. They will say that it was the previous administration's fault. Of course. And, you know, you give us another four years and we'll make it because they did the exact I'll tell same you thing. Four more years. There was peace in, in, in Israel um, when we, we had a strong yep, yep. leader. We now will kill you if you try and do yeah, anything. No one did kind anything. Of they just didn't. It's amazing. When you remove the strong leader, everyone just goes berserk. So Remove anyway, the consequences, so blah, blah, blah. my okay, I, I guess. Oh I yeah, guess to on that it. note, sorry. Just today, <laughs> McDonald's, you, they got those little yard signs in there. Opening position, not 13. management. Thirteen dollars, boy. Thirteen, like oh, I'm going to work for McDonald's. So Menards, Woo. Menards also is hiring. Menards is hiring, and until I, I saw it a few weeks ago, but until like the end of July, they give you an extra four dollars an hour for starting positions. So I think base pay is like twelve something ish an extra four dollars an hour until the end of july and that's not just the weekend for, for, no 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 it's not it's for for new for new hires so i saw it i saw the sign and i stopped and i like read through it i had to read through it twice because i was like what in the world i was like what Are they wow. so but but so and then here's the other thing so walmart walmart right now is redoing most of their floors mm-hmm. but it looks like they just hired probably like probably like 40 people because it's just like packed with workers. But today, today I was in there and I was getting something for the trip that we're going on Mm -hmm. and I needed to get into one of the glass cases. So I went to a worker that was literally just standing there and asked, hey, can you help me get in this? He was like in the same department. He's like, hey, can can you help me get in this? He's like, he just looks at, he looks straight at me and goes, I don't have the keys. And just looks at me. Yeah, I'm like, so, so I'm just standing there and I'm still looking at him and he's like, I don't have the keys. I'm like, okay, well, I'm asking you because you work here. Do you so, know who has So the he's keys? like, okay, I guess I can go find someone. I'm like, what do you mean you guess? So it's do like, it's one of those, it doesn't even training? matter. It doesn't even matter if you hire 40 people. You can't. I was in there. You have still. to train them. 
Yeah. yeah like, oh my so word. It was like it was it, Nightmare. It, it got very frustrating. And then the one thing so the thing that I wanted to buy was what is this is gonna sound crazy. It's one of those little cassette converters that you plug in. <laughs> it's exactly what I was buying. I was buying you know a cassette so ridiculous? tape. Hang on, let me finish. That was behind glass. Was, well, yes. Four dollars. That's how much it costs. The lady wait, hang wait, on. So, wait, so he finds wait, wait, wait. So he finds someone. He finds someone. They take I go back there, they they get it out, and and she goes, she goes, are you guys done shopping? And I was like, well, we're almost pretty, pretty much done. She's like, okay, I'll take this up to register five. And when you get done, go up there because they don't want you to steal it. That's, that's their <laughs> the policy four, is that the they'll take it. Up. I was like a $4 cassette tape thing. And I've got a 18, I've got a, an $8 bottle of uh, fluid. I'm for, pretty sure a gallon Haley's of milk car. is there a bottle of I'm going, what? There what? must be a lot of shoplifting happening, like small items Seriously. like that. Because I was, I was in there How getting. How big was it? Pocketable? Well, okay, so like uh, for instance, when I when I was finishing high school and I worked overnights at Walmart or, or after high school, I think it was in college. I can't remember. I was working overnights at Walmart. They had the numbers come out for how much was being shoplifted, and they had said that there was like in in that store specifically over the last I think it was like two years they had had almost a million dollars worth of stuff get taken out, but they didn't have anyone whoa. standing at the front watching people. Yeah. Like checking things, there were a lot of policies that weren't in place. So I was like, "Yeah, I guess I can see that." But now I feel now, like we're going through the Mexican border every time. Yeah, I, now I go it's like Walmart. they like eyeball it's you. Like, don't you know? I don't want to look at them in the eyes. I don't like. I look guilty, even though I have no reason. Now, to be like half of that stuff is behind the gla- behind glass things. They've got cameras in every aisle, which it's like that's fine. That's fine. But it's yeah. things like a four dollar cassette tape. You got to tell me that I can't. Like you can't. I was picking up me. some extra Polaroid uh, film stuff. And it's in a cardboard box, mm-hmm. and it's on one of those hangers, like you just slide it off. Right. But they have the plastic key, the, cover thing, a plastic thing where you have to get a key done. But it's a cardboard. So you just rip it. Yeah, I'm just like, <laughs> oops. You have to be <laughs> honest. Oops. What's oops. wrong with you? <laughs> I was on. I went and paid for it. I wasn't standing around and wait for a worker to tell me they didn't have a key. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So. Uh. Okay. Yeah, Mrs. Reed's like, I can understand razors, but a four dollar item. Here's the thing: the razors aren't even behind glass, so they aren't. No, no, they have. The, they do have you the little removable. Is? You have to get uh oh formula, have, right? But yeah, yeah, okay. For baby gotta, formula, each of them is now in their own little case, like a plastic case. Are you be serious? Open. You have to take it up front, and they have to open it with that a key. That was a big one. Baby, that like, was a really baby big one. formula. Now, granted, it's, these things are worth twenty bucks a pop, so. That it was worth a, some money. That was a big one when I worked at, worked at Walmart. People would steal. People baby would shoplift formula? baby formula. Yeah, it's so. expensive, but you can get it if you're on any kind. Of, never mind. Anyway, we should do shoplifting <sighs> as one of the pulps. But some people love. I it. can't get away with it for it. nothing. Either way, some oh. people hate it. <laughs> some people hate it. Some people love it. <laughs> Either way, you're gonna go to jail for it. Anyway, thank yeah. you so much for joining us for this episode of the Brook. We hope you'll join us again next week, same time, same place. Another fun-filled show, David, mm-hmm. Peter. And JT, thank you so much for another great show. You can find this show online at some point in the near future on iTunes. You can find previous shows and episodes anywhere that podcasts can be listened to. You can also find the video forms on YouTube. Make sure you like, subscribe, and uh, join us in the chat every week for a lot of fun and all that jazz. David has a verse that we're going to close this week out with. Matthew chapter 6, verses... I'm going to do two verses, 16 and... Or sorry, 19 and 20. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and shoplift and steal. (laughs) But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. And with that, we'll play the final song, Paid in Full, and uh, we'll see you all next week. The Brook, a ministry of North Platte Baptist Church.